Welcome back to the Strength and Speed Podcast. I'm your host, Strength and Speed owner, Evan Perparis. And joining me online, I have found her. I have found Brenna Calvert. Brenna, welcome back. Thanks, it's been too long. <laughs> Brenna's very elusive. Uh, she's very hard to keep track of and uh, get her, actually get her back on the podcast. So we're glad to <laughs> she's back on here. Um, Thank you. Are we going to have to take any breaks to like milk cows or anything else? You're, you're back living on... You're back living on the farm again, right? In uh, Kansas, is that correct? Yeah, I um, just fed the horses, but uh, I'll have to hurry up and go feed the cows afterwards. <laughs> all right, all right. Also joining me on the podcast, I have Daniel Leonard, a member of the CTG family. We actually had him on the Roundtable podcast at the about a year ago um, when HB revealed some deep secrets. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have to go back and listen to that because I'm not repeating that on the air uh, because there may be children listening, so... Yeah. So, Daniel, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, glad to be back. Uh, yes, we won't revisit some of the uh, some of the secrets revealed in that podcast, but you can always go back and listen to it if you want. And yeah. So, bef- let's before we get into the meat of today's episode, a little quick word from our sponsors. So, this episode is brought to you by Compex. Compex is the company that makes the electrical muscle stimulators. So, they have a couple different products. They've got the wire ones, so they're on the lower cost side. Uh, definitely a good product you want to if you want to get into electrical muscle stimulation kind of it contracts your muscles for you so you can get a workout actually in or you can just help move the blood around help recover um pretty easy night easy and nice it fits, it fits into your actual travel bag so it doesn't take up a lot of room unlike some other recovery products and they also have a wireless one if you want to spend the money and uh, have some expendable income i highly recommend the wireless one because it's awesome having no wires attached to you and then their newest products, the Fix, F-I-X-X, is a massage gun. So I think we've seen other similar companies come out with massage guns that have been targeting the OCR market. Well, Compex now has one, and I believe it's the lowest cost one that's available, or at least that I've seen personally. So I just picked one up a couple of days ago, and it is awesome. It really gets like targeted uh, parts of your muscles, so... Super comfortable. I was, I was using it on my legs the other day, and my daughter's like, oh, use it on me. So I was like hitting her in the back with it, and she was laughing. So good times. It's getting some good use in my household there. See that, and that is definitely on my list to get uh, here in the next couple of weeks because uh, I tried one of those guns out, and uh, after a, I think it was after a uh, continuum, and my calves were just on fire. And, man, you talk about talk about a good, good direct uh, stimulation. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, super. I really like it. it. It's great. And like you said, after Continuum or the first time I actually used one of the massage guns was after North American Championships this past year. And, it, you know, after running up and down that mountain, it like, you really kind of get in, get in there and get the deep parts of the muscle and kind of help us loosen up for the next day. So good stuff. All right. So let's get into the meat of today's episode. We got Brenna on the podcast and we got Daniel on the podcast because pretty big first race of the season for actually technically it's not your first race pretty big start to the season um we'll talk about your first race a little bit later but pretty big start to the season february 8th hannibal race kuwait kuwait city daniel won the contest so which is why we're bringing him on the podcast to talk about it and brenna went last year so yeah uh hannibal race kuwait so i guess daniel tell us a little bit about kind of your expectations going into hannibal race kuwait uh, funny as it is, I mean, you know, uh, I've followed your guys' journey out there in the last couple of years. Uh, 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 and um, the biggest thing is I just want to see the different type of obstacles and how they present an event. I mean, everything they do, it looks really organized. I mean, from the from the videos and everything, it looks like a pretty good attendance. But the terrain looks like, like nothing I've ever come across. So uh, the different type of obstacles that they have and then – then the terrain is, is definitely going to be um, really interesting for me. And, and, uh, and you know, it's, I've been to events all throughout, you know, except for the West Coast. So I really want to see what it's like for, 
for other cultures and other countries and how they approach OCR and kind of, you know, the demeanor about it all. Is it kind of the same or is it, is it, is it more, you know, big differences with the culture in the different countries? So I really want to see what the different experience is with, uh, with different countries. So. I'm already giggling because the first thing when you said the terrain, Evan, the first thing that comes to mind is I want to um, get Daniel's reaction and see if he uses the bathroom on course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> so the <laughs> the race takes place out in the – essentially, it's like the, the western edge of Kuwait City. Essentially, like once you drive outside the city limits, it just turns into desert, right? And like the rest of the country is complete desert. Um, minus the actual Kuwait city. So one of the things they do in Kuwait is they, um, during the winter, a lot of times they actually go and set up tents out there and they go camping. And it's like, it's like glamping really though. It's not from what I understand. I've actually never been inside the tents. I've just seen the tents from the outside. My understanding it's like glamping, right? And they actually like, you know, they bring everything they need. They bring a generator out there and then they, you know, um, smoke hookah, do whatever they do out there. And one of the things they do is I, some people actually like bring a toilet out there, not like a porta potty, like a like a legit porcelain <laughs> toilet. And then when it's time to break down their camp, some people just leave the toilet there. So it was pretty funny on, on the course. At one point, there's like you're in the middle of the desert, and there's just this toilet, like in the <laughs> middle of nowhere, right? Like I mean, there's not another structure anywhere close. It's just a toilet sitting in the middle of like the desert. And you're like, oh yeah, so pretty funny but yeah it's uh it's a definitely a different different culture different experience and you know i think the the race will be one thing but the i mean the, the trip as a whole is just going to be mind-blowing and i can't wait to get your guys reaction from that so brenna why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the highlights from last year yeah well i'm already i'm trying to like relive it because knowing that you're not going and now i'm kind of like the senior one out of the group out of the two of us <laughs> Um, got my nerves wow. up. All right, I gotta make sure I take care of Daniel and show him everything that you showed me and we got to do. Um, I just can't wait to go back. And I mean, the the people. I mean, we've made Evan and I like have made a a family out of um, the Hannibal family and the hospitality there. Just with the culture itself, like in Kuwait, everybody was amazing to us. So I can't wait to go back and see it again and kind of take it all in. But like, see Daniel's reaction because. I mean, Evan, you've traveled Middle East, and so I think you going with me, it was kind of fun for you to get to see, like, someone new, get to experience it all, and now I get to be that person to kind of, like, oh, I was already here, so I know a little bit, but see someone else experience it for the first time, I'm looking forward to that, but just the the whole atmosphere in general, like, the race itself, the, um, the festival, I've missed their festival <laughs> out of races I've been to recently, I'm ready to get back, um, Hannibal does great things just on the ground with, like, pumping people up, and spirit and camaraderie and, and the swag you get and everybody's like in their race shirts because their jerseys kind of or at least they were last year like before the race you know here in america we're used to everybody shows up either shirtless or whatever decked out in compression and they go race and then everybody's in their finisher shirt afterwards but i mean from the second you arrive it's like hannibal race everywhere swag and everybody's so proud and excited and it's lots of fun so i can't wait but I did warn Daniel just recently. I mean, it's known Daniel and I like to taste different beverages and stuff around and travel and experience. So um, that was new to me last year that Kuwait uh, alcohol is illegal. Dry, so I said, dry country. Yeah. We won't be tasting any Kuwait beers or anything, but um, yeah. I'll have to share in the coffee that you, Turkish coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, I think Daniel, you'd have been better at it with a trip to Lebanon because there, there is a lot of alcohol. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, Daniel and I, I've already made a date with him, whether he knows or not. If we are at the same location for a hotel, um, I'm claiming a date at the Cheesecake Factory to say that I ate cheesecake in Kuwait. <laughs> Daniel, make sure you go next door to the hotel and try the pigeon. It's delicious. Oh, my I, gosh. I remember the story. <laughs> it, it was, a, it was, it was actually, it was okay. It wasn't. It was okay. It tasted like it tasted like bird, right? I don't know. Um, but it, the, the fact remains: this is this is one hundred percent true. Every time I've eaten pigeon before a race, I've won. It's just a fact, right? Well, so. I mean, I'm, I'm just not going to go that stretch of a of a, of, a, of eating the pigeon is is, is going to get me a win. 
I mean, that's, a, that's one hell of a pigeon then. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, are you, um, are you a picky eater or are you like adventurous with food and stuff? I mean, you, I mean, you have to read, you have to define to me what you mean adventurous. So, I mean, well, yeah. I, mean I wouldn't, I didn't eat the pigeon or I might've had one piece and like wanted to not eat it, but just like. Uh, I'll go try the pigeon. <laughs> God. Well, then you'll be fine. Yeah. Just Without like, a doubt. Yeah. Just I mean, new foods. I mean, experiencing like a lot of people, if they're picky and only like, I mean, a certain teammate of ours might have only eaten cheeseburgers and probably wouldn't do so well over there. <laughs> but the food's another experience and culture. So I'm excited for you to try that. And hopefully you're not a picky eater. <laughs> now, now, Brent, I know you don't know my background that well, but, you know, I, I, half my life I didn't live in the in the states so uh, I have you know experienced different cultures so uh, I'm definitely on more open than probably most Americans. I didn't, you didn't, where, where did you live where were you where did you born I, mean. I was born in the states but uh but I grew up in the overseas uh, in the military brat, so Gotcha. So then this is like, I mean, you're familiar with all this then, really. <laughs> I mean, no, I never, we didn't travel to the Middle East. You, they don't deploy us with, with our family members. <laughs> I'm just going to see, so I don't know. I'm just, I'm just feeling around, but I'm excited for you to see the obstacles. And they have quintuple steps, or, yeah, isn't that what it's called, right? Yeah, I mean, but there's like seven of them, but yeah, there's, I mean, quintuple, <laughs> yeah, implies the number, but yeah, there's a lot of them. So. <laughs> Oh, but, they can't be worse than wet so <laughs> no no th- th- what i'm excited so the you know we, I, my first Hannibal race was in lebanon 2015 and then me and my brother went, went to uh, lebanon again in 2017 and then uh kuwait was 2019 i get my years confused 2019 and every time i've gone back it's been like a noticeable change and improvement so i'm really excited to see what they've changed between 2019 and 2020 and i'm excited to oh, hear yeah. hear what you guys think uh after the event because they they're always tweaking stuff and uh taking feedback and listening to the participants and you know taking brenna and i's advice or uh suggestions stuff like that so it's been cool to see the development of the company and the um the amount of swag we got last year was just preposterous right it was like you know we got two t-shirts and a headband and a buff and a little bag and like all the stuff that you'd normally have to go and pay for in addition to, you know, your race entry, this, it came with your race entry. And I don't remember how much the race entries were, but they were not, they, it was very cheap. It was like a very cheap U S race as far as wow. price, price point. Um, I mean, no, obviously it's, the hard part is getting over there for most people, right? Cause <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't drive over uh, for most people. Well, and that's just what I want to say to like everybody that's listening, because I know that the three of us all have personal friends that have traveled extensively or to like very far places for races. I mean, if not Canada for world championships, or we had people that went to London for world championships. And I know people like at rat race. So if you travel anywhere, make a vacation race or pick one for the year that you're going to be like, Hey, this one's my fun adventure race you need to start planning and pick a Hannibal race. Like, again, these locations, everybody's like, whoa, I would never pick Lebanon or wait. But I mean, now I've been twice with Evan. He's been more, this will be my third time that like, I'm obviously in love with it. I keep going back. I don't promote things I'm not passionate about. So really want more and more people if they travel and are willing to like add this onto your list because it's awesome. Yeah, but definitely. Wonder, isn't the weather though like Evan? We lucked out last year, right? <laughs> uh, it was cooler than I was expecting, and I don't remember if that was abnormally cold or abnormally warm. See, I thought it was warmer than it was supposed to be, so I'm like afraid <laughs> that this year might be different. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, yeah. did the uh, looked up the weather, uh, and it's it's like like gonna be like a low 60s to uh, the mid 70s, I think that day. Yeah. It's not- that's not bad. I remember when we got wet and we were standing around not moving, I started getting cold. Yeah, um, I it was you. also like overcast and it started drizzling a couple of times while, uh, during the event. But uh, And Daniel, so keep your eye out other than like, it's hard when you go to a new race, especially a new place. Like, I don't know, obviously what your thoughts are and where you're like going to do it. Try to compete and competitively or just obviously you're really awesome at, you know, obstacle completion and you'll focus on that. But 
to take it all in and, you know, still do the race, it's hard, but we'll go back out. But like, other than looking at the, sur the surrounding area and the scenery and the toilet and stuff, watch out for wildlife. <laughs> I don't know what I saw or what ran around in front of me, but something did. And it wasn't a camel because I really wanted to see a camel in the desert. <laughs> but yeah, so like, that's just one thing too that I always found exciting at, in a new place is different wildlife, not just the people around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen them in the wild, but I know Ka uh, Kuwait has kangaroo mice, which are awesome. Like it, they look like mice, but they have kangaroo legs and they hop instead of walk. They're super Maybe cool that, looking. I don't know. They yeah. just went really fast. <laughs> so keep an eye out for kangaroo mice. I don't know if that's but, their actual name. I think they actually have a different name, but I was gonna say because would you still call them mice at that point? <laughs> yeah, I mean they hop. They look. It looks like a. It looks straight up. I mean, Google it. It looks like a mouse with kangaroo legs. You know, it's like little that uh, hops around. They're super cute. Yeah. I'm, I need to start asking. I need to see if um, the female that took first place that almost caught you <laughs> will be there She's again. fast. Yeah, she'll get, you'll get checked, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> this sheep was running Evan down, and I, I never saw her after that top hill. Be prepared, okay. Daniel. They, I don't know if you remember, and they've seen pictures, but, like, I'm assuming they might keep it the same way because it's kind of a signature cool thing for the start was like we ran straight up a sand mountain practically like right at the beginning <laughs> and it was just like a scramble to the top and this little chain thing at the top it was really cool but then after that that girl was gone and she was she was hunting evan yeah so we'll uh you obviously follow brenna's social media You'll, she'll be all over it instagram facebook all that stuff um and then we're also gonna give them access to some of the strength and speed social media so we'll do some of that and we'll probably actually probably try to put some stuff out on motor and guide and stuff like that. So uh, just kind of keep an eye out for that stuff. And remember Kuwait is uh, eight hours ahead. So when you wake up Saturday morning, or if you're going to bed really late Friday night, that's when the content will start coming out. So, um, you know, for those of you who stay up late or wake up early, it'll be, it'll be there before the other, you know, the state stuff in the state starts populating as far as race information. And honestly, in February, there's not much race information anyway. So, yeah. Um, not a lot to compete with there, but it'll be cool. And like I said, I think the, the best part is just the experience in general, right? So, you, you know, if, if you're the OCR content will be on, you know, strength and speed and motoring guide, but I would follow Brenna's Instagram and Daniel's Instagram and stuff like that. Cause they're, that they're going to give you the cultural experience. You're going to see the food. You're going to see the, the places they're staying at the, you know, the, the giant malls that they go to all that good stuff. Uh, the whole culture and you know people's erratic driving and stuff like that you know that that's what you, that's what the to me like that's the best part of the trip like you know the, the ocr stuff so it's awesome um but you know the two combined is really what makes it a worthwhile trip so yeah so, on that note definitely my story for instagram will probably have like the most compiled stuff but obviously that'll go away in 24 hours but then i'll post like full photos and everything on facebook for everybody to check out and I mean, it's just, it's really cool to see all of it, the whole, like you said, the whole experience, but um, I am trying to, I'm, I'm just, I can't believe you're not going, Evan. <laughs> no, I'm like trying to psych myself up that, you know, I already, I was already there. I'm already familiar with it, but it's still kind of nerve wracking, but hey, <laughs> we can do it, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll leave you if I have to. So. <laughs> no, you're good. No, it's like a buddy system. Evan never left me. He took good care of me and I will be telling Tracy that you'll be taking good care of me too. <laughs> So I am excited to see how it goes. Now I was supposed to go, well, which I brought, I put out on um, two podcasts ago. Uh, basically, I have to work that weekend, so can't go to Kuwait, which sucks. Hoping I get to make it to a different Hannibal race at some point, either twenty twenty or twenty twenty one. I knew they've they've got some other stuff in the works, which I is nothing has been finalized yet, so I can't release any of it. Um, both. Yeah, both within Hannibal Race and then within the wider OCR world. Um, I'm super excited actually about both those announcements. I'm, I'm hoping they both pan out and complete. So oh, you just well, kind of fo follow Hannibal know, Race for updates. Yeah. How quick did everybody see? We can announce at least that an another reason to get to Hannibal Race if you're looking for qualification for the big old OCR World Championships by Adventury, um, Hannibal Race is an official qualifier for that. So again some people kind of like plan where they're going based off that so make a note yeah 
So be, anyway, because my Hannibal race got canceled kind of last minute, or I found out I wasn't going to go on, I think, 20 December, I took my Ultra OCR charity fundraiser that I was going to do in 2021, and it was a good opportunity to move it to 2020. So I, I scrambled and put together OCR America 2 when hell freezes over, literally in about six days. Like, I mean, from start to – I mean, I had the general concept in my mind, but, I mean, I was emailing companies, designing shirts, designing logos, building websites – you know, talking to charities, getting sponsors. It was, it was a hectic week and I got it all up and running. So come out to OCR America too. Again, a multi-lapping, essentially a mix of gyms and outdoor OCR venues running about 26 miles a day and completing obstacles, uh, all to raise money for the charity Folds of Honor, scholarship money for children whose parents were killed or wounded in action. Uh, please go over to OCR America too. It's on the Strength and Speed website and you can donate you can donate to backside support. You can donate to folds of honor. Uh, you can sign up and come to the event. The first 50 people that sign up will get a hat. I'm sorry, not a hat, a belt buckle. So j same size as the one from endure the gauntlet, right? Like nice four inch by two and a half inch belt buckle. And then a soft uh, t-shirt with all like the logos on there. Then you got, you got one of those belt buckles. Give us a, give us some, your opinion on how they came out. The endure the gauntlet one. Le legit. I mean, um, uh, I've seen a lot of the other belt buckles, but this one, I mean, on top of just the actual meaning behind it and, and, and everything that I was doing, uh, uh, really, really nice size. Uh, I think Evan, uh, I think he described it when he said he, uh, he, wanted, he wanted obscenely large, and uh, that's exactly what we got. <laughs> so, so, so funny story, I, uh, I went to, I baptized my son at, in church uh, about a couple weeks ago. And I, I, that's actually the belt buckle I wear underneath my suit. But normally my jacket covers it, so no one can see it. So it's, it's kind of not a big deal. It's just a, you know, no one even notices it because my suit jacket's <laughs> covering it. And I was actually baptizing my sister's daughter. And they're like, uh, you take off your jacket so you don't get like oil on it. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh. so I took it out. And then my, you know, my friend's like, my friend's like, I was wondering why your cell phone was attached to your waist. And I was like, no, that was, that was my belt buckle. So, um, <laughs> It was it was noticeable, but yeah. That's exactly the look you get yeah. when when you're wearing this around. Because uh, uh, I mean, it it's an awesome metal, but when you're wearing it as the uh, belt buckle, it is definitely uh, an attention grabber. Uh, I mean, in the design itself, I mean, definitely uh, one of the better designs I've seen. So. Yeah. So the the OCR America one that's coming out again, same size, same quality, made by the same company. Again, first fifty people to sign up. So I will reserve those first 50 and set them off to the side. Um, so I'm not going to like, if, you know, I won't know that you didn't show up essentially until day seven. And by that point, it'll be too late. So if you want one, reserve it by, you know, paying the 40 bucks. And if you can't make it, you can't make it. And I'll, I'll make sure it gets to you at some point. So, and then again, you know, please donate to Folds Vaughn or Backside Support. I got, we have, we have a great crew going with us. We got, so Jacob Stone from Strength and Speed is going to be driving. We got Mike Stefano from Obstacle Running Adventures is going to be covering, basically putting out weekly podcast, or sorry, weekly, daily podcasts. So the next podcast you hear will actually, you'll hear Mike Stefano's voice along with my voice. Uh, he'll be kind of doing a lot of the backside podcast stuff and actually talking to me about the event. And then on top of that, this is the mo part I'm most excited about. We have uh, Bobby Ross from Stoke Shed, who if you've watched any of the Conquer the Gauntlet Protein page or... Uh, some of my videos that I've posted on my personal timeline from Stoke Shed, he just does an amazing job. Brennan, what are your thoughts on uh, Stoke Shed there? Well, I just, like, my mouth just kind of dropped. I was waiting for you to stop because I was like, I did see your post, and I'm so excited. Is he going to be with, like, he's going the whole time? Yeah, yeah. It's all seven. It's going to be me, me, Bobby, Jacob, Mike, and my dad in a van all crammed in there. Oh, oh man, my God. I'm so mad I can't prove that was that's a good group and it's gonna be fun what? and that's a bunch of characters oh how fun <laughs> so, I'm so bothered by that right now <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah I, Poor dad. <laughs> I think we'll get some good stories not just from racing just from living in a van and driving between hotels and random peaceful people's, people's houses for a week so I'm really excited <laughs> for that do you have all that planned already too? Like where you're, who you're staying with and whatever? Yeah, we got, we got most places to stay. Uh, we're staying with people from most places. Uh, I think right now we still need about three hotels that we have to book. So if anyone knows 
someone that'll put us up in Columbus, Ohio, or what was the other one? Erie, Pennsylvania was the other one. No. And then there's one Wait. in like the middle of a random place in Missouri. So isn't Columbus where Michelle is? Yeah, Michelle's over there. I don't think her place is big enough to support five dudes no, um, crushing on her floor. At, the, at um at her gym. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that is an option, I guess. Uh, we prefer to have like a shower though. I mean, and all that Meh. stuff. Don't get fancy now. Yeah, I'm so mad I'm missing that one. I mean, you talk about the entire week of, I mean, an entire year, like that one week is like maybe the one that's blocked off. Uh, well, if I hadn't already registered for my first event of the year, I would have totally been on board, but dang. So, <laughs> speaking of first events of the year, I know Brenna's doing something new. So why don't you talk about your first event of the year? Yeah, so um, this year is a bit different for me, just kind of going back to doing for me and trying some new things, and a um, few of us here in the States have already gotten to experience it, but if you have not heard, um, High Rocks is new to the States this year from Germany, and it's basically, I'm going to call it like CrossFit hybrid, OCR hybrid. It doesn't really have like obstacles, but a strength and speed type event, technically, I'd say. Um, you run 800 meters, and then you do a That's workout. A, I'm going to interrupt. That's the second time someone used strength and speed in back-to-back -back episodes. I feel like I need, like, a bell or something to ring every time someone says it. <laughs> All right, keep going. Keep going. But, yeah, so it's um, is it 10 stations. So you run 800 meters, and then you do a workout and repeat. So then another 800 meters, and it's a different workout. Um, like wall balls. They have the skier machine, uh, weighted lunges of uh, rowing I'm trying to think so yeah but it's um the workouts are their competitions like posted online with the weights and everything for you to see and start practicing um I still train under Yancey for Yancey camp so he has specific high rocks workouts to help supplement OCR training and yeah I'm gonna give it a go um there was already a Miami and a New York event so Chicago is the third U.S. event and I'm I was all for it and was like, this is built for me. I'm so excited. And then now after the two events, everybody I've seen post about it, even like the top finishers say how brutal it was and like it was fun and they did great, but it was like an ass kicking. So I was feeling confident and <laughs> now I'm kind of like, all right, first, first event of the year, I'm just going to go see how I do, probably get my ass kicked, but then I'm going to attempt February. There's a Dallas event. So this one's kind of like get my feet wet and see where I stand um well, and there. what was their finishing times do you remember approximately um, so ryan kent just he took first in new york and he was like 20 seconds away from breaking the world record for it and i think it's just under an hour and i feel like the girls damn the whole event it takes that long yeah. oh, no wow yeah. Hold on. that yeah. was not that was not what i was expecting i, I was yeah. I, in my head, I haven't, I mean, I, I've looked a little bit on a line, but I have not done that much research. And that was a lot longer than I was expecting. And there, I mean, I've been following on Instagram, like High Rocks World, and it looks like a really well put together event, very organized. It's indoor arena set up. Um, I'm just excited to try something new, like organization wise and a new type of arena style setup. But um, I think Ryan Kent was just under an hour, like maybe 53 minutes. And I don't think a girl has broken an hour yet, possibly if I'm, I'll have to double check. Um, but there's like a pro division and an open division. There's team divisions. Um, so I'm going to run and attempt to not die in the women's pro division. Um, I know there have been a lot of crossover athletes like Spartan, um, Faye Stenning. I know competed. Corinna Coffin competed in Miami. Um, so, yeah, we'll see who shows up. I've seen a lot of girls, I think, that train under the endurance project. I've seen a handful of people. So. A good number of OCR people are trying it, so that's my first event at uh, January 25th, and that's why I can't pit and crew with you, and then after that, straight to Kuwait, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a perfect fit for Corinna. I mean, she's in that CrossFit, you know, she's more into that CrossFit world now than she was a couple of years ago. When you say that, and that's what makes me really nervous, because, like, she went out and did it for her first one, and everybody was, you know, banking on her being at the top or the top or whatever, and unfortunately for her she did not do so well i don't think she'll really? be top um there's a sled push and sled pull and in miami apparently the carpet was like ridiculously slick and she had no traction and spent 
like minutes, minutes there. So of course that got me nervous. I've been asking everybody like what shoes are the best to do because I'm not familiar with like a indoor style setup, but then needing traction. So it's like, I don't know. I was, I was recommended the VJ Max because of their tread and traction. So we'll see <laughs> what happens. But yeah, like, I mean, she did really well until the traction on the carpet. So again, new events, you don't really know what to expect. How did, uh, how did Faye end up doing? Um, she, so I think she did the second one in New York and Faye won for the pro women. Really? Which, well, I guess, I, again, I was picturing it to be like a 20 minute event. If it's like an hour, I guess that's a little more. Yeah. So I mean, it's like endurance for the 800 meter, like that thrown in there. But then the, I didn't, I wasn't expecting her to be at the top because of the strength portion of it. So I guess it's, that's why I'm really excited and have no clue what to expect, honestly, because I kind of fit right in the middle of that. Like I, I'm better at strength. Than I am at the speed, but we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. Right, so power though, the, the strength they can't put too much strength into it. I mean, you'll. I mean, no you have to check it like the weight for the sled. I mean, it's heavy. It's heavy stuff. It's I, that's why I'm kind of like, wow, this is crazy. And like thousand meter row. I mean, it's some big numbers for a hundred. I think it's a hundred wall wall ball. I mean, it's yeah. That's why people are saying it's brutal. So, and that's why it takes an hour. <laughs> I see that. All right. So I just pulled up state face standings, uh, Facebook came in third place. I'm not sure which high rocks event this was, but she said she got beat by the world champ and a CrossFit girl. And she said the last event was a hundred wall balls, which is sounds awful. Yeah. Like, yeah that's a, I, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm looking at, maybe I'm looking at a, a different event. Maybe she did two events. I don't know. Yeah. Cause there have been two, but anyway, she came in third on one of them and a uh, hundred wall ball sounds like something I don't want to do. So <laughs> I'm also very uncoordinated and throwing a ball up and down is, uh, is not in my wheelhouse very well. So, yeah, <laughs> you say that, but this for me, I, I don't really know that you go through. What'd you say? I said, you say that, but we've seen so many things that you've kind of guy kind of put yourself through. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's very, um, it's weird. There's, there's things like, you know, if I enjoy it, I'm all in. And if, if I don't enjoy it, I'm not really interested. I mean, uh, you know, I guess at, even things you enjoy become painful after a certain point. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I think that allows me to drive through it versus something I really don't enjoy, like wall balls. But yeah. All right. Um, high rocks. Yeah. So when we bring Brenna and Daniel back on for the uh, post Kuwait podcast, we'll also be talking about high racks. So curious to see how that goes for them or for for you. And Daniel, what's your first event coming up? Well, actually, I've changed it up. I was actually going down to uh, to Texas to do the Trident uh, Bone Frog, but with uh, when, when you uh, told me about the OCR America, uh, I'm shuffling that around now, and uh, uh, I'm going to try to make that Saturday event, and then uh, officially my first one will be the Yeti on that Sunday on the 26th. So. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, oh, I want to hurry home from High Rocks and try to make that too. Because <laughs> like, if I leave Saturday night, I can get to the Yeti Sunday morning. <laughs> it's it's good. And I mean, Yeti is super cheap for an OCR. Like it is not, it is not expensive. Um, I mean, there's a sale going on. They were recording this. By the time I publish, it'll be, the sale will be over. But it was like, it's like $32 after, you know, all the fees and everything for, to sign up. So yeah, I think I paid more before than it. I mean, it's really cheap right now. So. Yeah. So, and then, and then if you know that gets you into the event and then if you want to get a buckle and shirt for OCR America, it's an additional 40 bucks, but that 40 bucks is going hundred percent to charity. Right. So I'm not taking a cut of that. So, um, you, I mean, that's, you can, that, that's a donation, right? Like that's, you can count. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's not, you know, you're not, I don't feel like you're wasting money there because it's going to a good cause. So. Absolutely. So for 77 was like 73 bucks. You're getting two t-shirts and a belt buckle and like over 50% of your total cost is going to charity. Like you can't beat that. So. And, a, and a damn good course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, they, and you get to break a car at the end, which is pretty cool. So, all right. So we're going to start wrapping it up here before we go. We do have three people on the podcast and the, I've been breaking this rule recently, but um, now we actually have three people. So we're going to go th through with it anyway, or still. Tell us one thing people would be surprised to know about you and who wants to go first, Daniel. Sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, most people, 
I think you would think that I'm pretty athletic, uh, especially in my younger days. Um, uh, but in high school, uh, there was the sport that I participated in the most was actually tennis. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, and <laughs> that was five year sport for me, uh, eighth grade through my senior year. And my senior year, uh, me and my doubles partner were were undefeated in Europe and ranked number one. Damn. Did you wear a really cool headband and everything? <laughs> <laughs> the uh hey, you know the rebels <laughs> from you know the 90s that we were we actually wore our hats you know cocked to the side <laughs> that is amazing we need to find a picture of this and post it this is amazing and both of you, too, you know me and, me and my double partner were quite the uh, characters and so we had a we had some teammates you know a couple of them that were that were taller than us you know you're kind of you know, stereotypical, like, you know, you know, uh, tennis player, you know, especially dominant Europe tennis player. And um, so we would get off the bus, right? And we would be going to a match, we'd get off the bus, and we would have like some our Nike jumpsuits on, you know, those wind jumpsuit breakers <laughs> that were really popular back then. And, you know, we would kind of mess around during warm ups, you know, the other team would, you'd always size up the other team when the other team, you know, gets there to your, to your venue. And so we would be messing around and hitting the ball around, you know, not taking it real serious, definitely kind of um, downplaying. Uh, and they would look and they would, you know, as a team, you would rank your, uh, your you try to rank the other team. Uh, yeah, you size up the competition. Yeah, yeah you actually, you, right before the matches start, you line up in your rankings. The team lines up in the rankings from one to, to eight. And, uh, and they'd always be expecting, you know, <laughs> something very different of a, of a of a lineup and then so me and him would walk up to the front and line up and then they would look you could see the cr the looks from across the front <laughs> the court, and then it would turn into oh we're gonna crush this whole team <laughs> so we do our handshakes you know break up go to the different courts we're gonna play and then we would unload on them <laughs> and then you would hear the coaches like in the off off court thing, uh, these guys were not practicing as good as they really are. <laughs> <laughs> and would almost cry foul, like, um, uh, this not, that's not real sportsman like of them. <laughs> so, some, peop some people may not know what you look like now. So, ex explain your like height, weight to people, <laughs> to people, like, which is why this is so funny. Yeah, we know you, right? Like, so, yeah, I'm, I'm about uh, 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 5'11 and about 230 pounds. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just picturing the windbreaker and the hat cocked at the side. <laughs> so I'm gonna claim I'm gonna claim your tennis background is why you're so good at obstacles. Like, cause they you always see tennis with like those huge forearms from like swinging the racket. I think that's why you're so good at obstacles, cause you can do. You can do CTG's obstacles, and you are not the smallest person on the course, right? Like you're, you're. I'd say you're probably one of the heaviest dudes that completes all the obstacles, if not the yeah. heaviest. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, in Iowa, what was it, Iowa, Wichita? I can't remember. I was going over Continental Divide after uh, Smooth Criminal. <laughs> there was another guy that kind of came around. He was like, he's like, uh, hey man, you crushed that uh, Smooth Criminal. I was like, oh thanks. And he said, and then he said, for a big dude, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, I didn't really mean it like that. I was like, I'll take the compliment. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's awesome. All right, Brenna, what do you got? Um, well, I mean, I did make a post about it recently, but maybe everybody hasn't seen. So, for those some don't know, I guess I think maybe Red Beast, the nickname, has gone away and around town here. I have a new nickname, and apparently I'm a brawler, and um, I'm now the bar fighting girl. <laughs> so I'm 32 years old. And I mean, this is really hard to believe, I guess. It's the hard thing that, like, I've never been in an actual physical altercation outside of Broken Skull Challenge. Um, I... I mean, I guess some people probably find me to be a bitch and think that I get into fights and arguments, but I really don't. 
until just recently I got into my first bar fight and apparently I had a girl in a headlock and I don't know shit, <laughs> shit got crazy <laughs> oh that is exciting and super classy <laughs> <laughs> okay imagine I mean it's like you should see the bar the little ice house bar and um yeah. I didn't throw the first punch I waited until a hand was laid on me so I I stuck to my my standards and my guns of being classy but yeah, I'm, I'm a i'm a bar brawler now so watch out y'all <laughs> that's interesting. we're gonna put th- we're gonna put this up with the second most cowboy thing that's coming out of your <laughs> <laughs> it's getting worse the longer i stay the more and more cowboy and redneck things sound <laughs> oh boy all right let's see i'll go with i think i probably have told i mean this one may have come out already um but so I the I played some sports in high school. I was not very good at them. The only one I played for the actual – like I played on a traveling soccer team until like 10th grade. I played I, – I was on cross country in high school, but I was terrible. Um, I think my PR was like 20.59. Um, and that's weighing like, I don't know, a buck 20 or something. And that might be being generous. Um, so I was not a good runner. Like I never liked running in high school – which makes my current uh, OCR stuff kind of ironic and kind of unexpected. But the thing that's kind of the one thing that I think people would be, I should be surprised is like, I don't like, this is going to sound weird coming out of my mouth. I don't like being outside that much. Right. Like I know, like I do all these ultra OCRs and these runs and stuff like, but I don't like being out. I mean, like if I'm going outside to do something, I enjoy it. Right. Like I'm going outside to race. I have a purpose. I got it. Right. Like if you're like, Hey Evan, let's go lay on the beach and sweat and just do nothing. I'm like, no. You know, if they're like, let's go for a hike and enjoy the scenery, like, mm, hard pass. Like, if we're going for a run, that's different, right? It's got a purpose. I'm training. I got it. But, like, just being outside in general, I just don't like it. I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me. So you didn't like our day in Lebanon then where we were walking around outside? No, well, we're, sho- we're like, shopping and window shopping and seeing stuff. So again, so we had a purpose. That's fine. But, like, if you're just, like – let's just go and stand in the woods. Like, no, man, like I've done that. I did that for the army. It sucks. I'm getting rained on. <laughs> the people are making me carry a backpack. I'm tired. They're not feeding me. You know, like I got it. I, I feel like, it, yeah. So. Do you have a lot of offers to just go stand outside and do nothing? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, no. But I, sometimes you, like you look at some of the athletes post and they're like, I'm just enjoying nature and just being outside. And I'm like, no, don't enjoy that at all. Like hard pass. <laughs> so like run the- it. Again, if we're going run, if we were trained, if we got a purpose, I'm in. Um, if we're just gonna go, go for a leisurely hike through the woods, like I, I feel like I, there's better stuff I could be doing with my time. Like I could be running and training. Or um, yeah. oh, Evan, they definitely say opposites attract. You and I have been good friends for a while. <laughs> Polar opposites. <laughs> so. I'd only go sit outside and sweat for no reason. <laughs> I hate laying on the beach. I hate it. I think it's like the worst. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite. Oh, terrible. I go lay in my front yard in the summer here with cows around and I'll have a beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I totally agree with Evan. Like when they were like, hey, I want to go lay on the beach. And then, you know, my answer is why? <laughs> right. Well, it's, usually the counter argument is, no, we'll go out and we'll have a couple of drinks and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like your main hobby is drinking. It's not laying on the beach. <laughs> like, I've had this argument with people at work where they're like, no, no, fishing's great, man. You go, you open a couple of beers, and it's like, yeah, no, you, it's like your hobby is drinking. Your hobby's not fishing. It's, it's, it's drinking and doing stuff. You're like, yeah, I go to the, the football game, have a couple of beers. I go to tailgating, have a couple of beers. I go to the barbie. You know, I go, to, I go fishing, have a couple of beers. It's like, like the hobby is drinking there. You just like enjoy, enjoy doing other things while you're drinking. But um, yeah. Some byproducts. <laughs> so, all right, enough of that. Let's do final shout outs. Um, sponsors friends families anything else like that you want to give a shout out to before we get going uh daniel you're up first uh absolutely have to shout out hannibal race uh for uh for this amazing offer so uh um i mean i can't wait to do this and uh and have an awesome time and then tell everybody about it as awesome as it was it was on my to-do list but uh when i was following y'all but having having this uh Getting this grand prize is absolutely insane, and big shout out to them for this. So, right on. I'm also gonna give a shout out for you for Mud Gear because apparently you're their new cover model. Because every time I open the Mud Gear Instagram page, you're up there. Like it, it, 
if you open your email and saw uh, a handsome looking man in a mudgear car seat cover that was daniel and um you know a couple days ago before recording this he was the he was on i think cliffhanger on conquer the gauntlet in the uh, pink mudgear socks there if i remember correctly or maybe even savage i'm not sure it was a, it was a monkey yeah, boss. yeah it was savage okay brenna what do you got um so i said earlier basically i'm kind of starting this year fresh on doing for me and i don't really have too many like sponsors to shout out or give support or thanks to these days but i do have a new um running coach that has accepted my awesome skills to work with me um it was funny because he actually said i'm still trying to feel you out after like three or four weeks so i don't know if that's good or not but a big shout out to run fluent um chris stengel Oh, nice. is a runner and um, running coach for RunFluent. And I basically saw them like start up about a year ago and I've watched athletes that, you know, posted they're being coached by them. And I like watched people improve over the season, like they're running specifically. And I thought, hey, like I do Yancey camp. I love it for obstacles and that type of training and incline running and stuff. But I needed to get my actual running game back to where it needs to be. Um, so yeah, so a huge shout out to Chris for taking me under his wing and dealing with me and my crazy lack of motivation these days to get my workouts in. And um, I think it's going to be a great season with some new help along the way. So shout out to run fluent and check them out. And they're taking on new athletes and it's a great, great program. Awesome. Uh, Chris is a good dude too. So definitely a good, good resource there. One of my MIT, MIT brothers. Yeah. So a couple shout outs here. One, the strength and speed development team closes the window for applications closes in a couple of days from now. So if you've been sitting on that, uh, make sure you get it in. Got a bunch of pretty good applications in this year. So make sure you submit them and do a good job on the application. We'll be looking at those and the window closes. I think January 15th is the last day. And then we'll decide. I'll probably decide almost immediately after that because I'm going to be busy for OCR America. I don't want to get that stuff knocked out and not have to worry about it, but yeah. Strength Speed Development Team gets you in a private Facebook group with people like Daniel and Brenna and a bunch of other uh, strength. And basically, anyone, anytime you see someone wearing like a Strength and Speed Legendborn or Triton jersey or any of those like uh, Strength and Speed shirts, it's pretty much someone from the development team group. So it gives you access to people like Luke Labonte, nutritionist, uh, Kelly Williams in there, physical therapist, William Shell, physical therapist. It's literally then, got a little of like everything for athletes. <laughs> yeah. And then we have like, I mean, like, again, like something like, I'd say a, probably one third to half the group has personal training certifications too. And then a lot of mixed, a strong mix of athletes there from strength to endurance. So a lot of, a lot of good questions you get answered as opposed to just asking in a random Facebook group, you'll get who knows what type of answer you get. You know, everyone generally is along the same thought process in the group and you get actually ac answers that are a little more science-based, a little more actual you know, people have done some research on it before they just uh, open their mouth. So yeah, check I like out. Get, I like you get answers from people who actually are and know what they're talking about, and not everybody just throwing in their opinion. Yeah, and then on top of that, I I, I give perks. Um, sometimes when I have bleed over perks, I I pass them off to people in the development team, right? So I think I gave away uh, Spartan race this year. I gave away a toughest mudder race. Um, can't remember what else I gave away, and then a couple well, like uh fat grips i've given away um within the group so stuff like that and you might have a connection to hannibal race because i have to give my big shout out to strength and speed is my connection to hannibal race originally that's <laughs> yeah that's right so um apply for the strength and speed development team it's free um if you miss and you're listening to this as an old back episode you can always apply oh it, it, it's basically a pay for entry right so there's a paywall that prevents uh the group from getting too big uh, you can pay anytime you want for the rest of the year and we'll let you in and you get access to that group. I post workouts in there sometimes, um, kind of help you along with your programming, stuff like that. So lots of good stuff there. Let's see what else we got going on. Strength and Speed website, down to just Blegmit lights currently. Not sure when the Blegmit Extreme is coming in. If you've been following the news, like the entire continent slash country of Australia is on fire. So um, I hope, hope that kind of calms down. So I'm, I'm not sure. Hopefully Deanna and Amanda, the actual owners of Blegmit are doing all right. I haven't heard back from them in the last couple of days. So kind of thoughts and prayers go out to them. Uh, but yeah, we have Blegmit lights on the site. Uh, all the books are available on the site. 
the Ultra OCR Man audiobook comes out on Audible or came out on Audible. So make sure you head over and pick up uh, that and listen to that. Uh, you can use your Audible credits there. Or if you're not a member of Audible, you can actually just buy the book straight up or the drive buy the audiobook straight up off the uh, Audible website, the Amazon website there. And then last shout out was, um, so again, speaking of training groups, if you're looking for a more specific training group, specifically focused for Conquer the Gauntlet, Conquer the Gauntlet Protein now has a training group. Um, you can sign up on the CTG Protein website, go to the pro shop over there, and you'll get essentially it's four workouts a week. And uh, there's an option to pay by monthly, or if you want to save some money, you can pay for the full year in advance. And you get workouts that the actual pro team is doing. So lots of good workouts there. Again, I think over oh, half, the, <laughs> half the pro team has uh, training certifications. So uh, we kind of pulled our resources together and, and piled those in. You know, I think we've been bouncing around between trainers for a while. And just we were pulled in two different many directions, the number of people on the team and their goals. So we just kind of decided to sit down and focus for ourselves and make it very CTG specific, focusing on grip strength, those technical obstacles that you'd see at mandatory obstacle completion courses like Conquer the Gauntlet, Savage Race, Adventure OCR World Championships, North American OCR Championships, stuff like that. So you can head over to the pro team shop there and sign up for that. Uh, I think that's it. What else am I missing? Anything else? You covered a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm tired of talking. Let's go. Um, again, follow a couple days after this comes out, January 19th, we're going to start posting short daily episodes covering OCR America. So follow, share those, please donate to Folds of Honor, donate to Backside Support, all that good stuff. And if, you, if, you, if you're not the type of person that likes to donate, then pick up a book uh, because, that, again, that helps support. You know, basically, when, keep, when people keep buying the books and buying you know, the audio books and all that stuff, it, makes me, it sends a signal to me to keep doing work, right? Because the amount of return of investment I get on these books is, is not high to be honest with you, right? Like there's not like, I'm not like rolling in money from selling books. Um, you know, basically if I break even or do better than break even, I consider it a win and we continue to, we continue to move forward. If I stop breaking even, I stop writing books. So, yeah. And I will speak for someone that gets no money as someone that's a community member. We want you to keep producing all the content. So keep it coming. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a, it is a lot of work. So I think that's about it. I'm glad I got to come back on. And um, if I'm not back before, I will be back after Kuwait. So yeah, thank the, you. The, so the next seven, eight episodes will be all OCR America short episodes. And the episode after that will probably be Brennan and Daniel on again. Um, because I'll, I'll probably be too tired from OCR America to do anything else. So we'll see. Maybe, we may have one buffer episode in there. All right. Daniel, excited to see you soon. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> have a good tri have a good trip, you two. Uh, don't get arrested in Kuwait. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> now nah, they're they're it cool. I, I you know when I initially posted the contest, someone made uh, on one of the Facebook groups. Someone made an off color comment about uh, how dangerous it is, and it's just it's just not true, right? I mean, I brought my 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 wife was five months pregnant, and I brought her, and I brought my was she three and a half? I brought oh, her. She, such a like. So she every she was like famous there. <laughs> no, they loved her because she's blonde, a little blonde girl, and you know, like in, everyone in the Middle East is like dark hair, dark eyes, uh, dark skin, right? So a little blonde. I mean, if you if you listen to the news uh, of of the United States outside of the United States, you'd say it's a dangerous country too. <laughs> exactly. That's what that's what everyone tells me every time. You can go somewhere in D.C. or Houston or wherever and find a dangerous spot. So we will oh, be yeah. safe, and have fun, and we will represent well. My neighbors in college, I, lived, I, I went to college in Baltimore. My neighbors would get raided by the police once a semester. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> the, the liquor store we used to go buy alcohol from in college, um, more than once a semester, we'd go in and they'd be like, no, we're not selling anything. We just got robbed. And we'd be like, cool. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right? Like completely unfazed. My roommate, my roommate called Papa John's once while they were being robbed. Like in the middle of the robbery, he called. And they hung up on him, and he was like, dude, Papa John's just hung up on me. So we waited like five minutes and called back, and then they were like, yeah, we just got robbed. Uh, we're not taking orders right now. We're like, oh. So Baltimore, great, greatest city in America. That's what it says in their park benches. True story. Yeah, I've been there. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> True story. But I did enjoy college there. It was, it was, we did have a good time. Didn't meet my wife there. So can't complain. We have so diverted.
yeah all right we're we're way off topic <laughs> all right i'm gonna go uh hang out with my family before i leave them for a week thanks for listening all right we'll catch you guys later later